SpaceX has been trying to get regulatory approval for its next-generation Starlink constellation for more than two and a half years, and now the U.S. Federal Communications Commission has finally given the company a license only after making its scope drastically smaller. So in today's video, we will check out everything on the SpaceX Starlink Gen 2 constellation that was weakened by the partial FCC grant. Welcome to Smarter Tech, and without further ado, let's get started! For those who may be wondering what the FCC is, it stands for Federal Communications Commission, and it is in charge of regulating radio, TV, wire, satellite, and cable communications between the 50 states, the District of Columbia, among other countries. The Commission is an independent U.S. government agency the Congress oversees. The federal agency is in charge of putting America's communications laws and rules into action and ensuring they are followed. On May 2020, SpaceX sent the FCC its first application for a license for Starlink Gen 2, an updated group of 30,000 satellites. In the second half of 2021, SpaceX modified its Starlink Gen 2 application so that it could fully utilize the company's more potent Starship rocket and increase the constellation's utility. The FCC finally let SpaceX file its Gen 2 application in December 2021, which started the last review process. After completing its evaluation on November 29, 2022, the FCC authorized SpaceX to launch only 7,500 of the 30,000 Starlink satellites it had requested more than 30 months earlier. The FCC should have explained how it chose to cut the number by 75% or why the new number is slightly lower than a different group of 7,518 satellites called Starlink Gen 1 that SpaceX already had permission to set up in late 2018. To make matters worse, the FCC repeatedly says that the number of satellites SpaceX was allowed to launch wasn't increased by their action that day and that is in fact slightly decreased. Before we continue, hold up, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic. Because SpaceX voluntarily decided not to launch the dedicated V-band Starlink constellation for which it already had a license just prior to this choice, it was able to substantially reduce the overall number of satellites that will be in orbit in the end. Instead, after Starlink Gen 2 was approved, it would request authorization to equip part of the 29,988 Gen 2 satellites with V-band payloads. This would get the same result without the need for another 7,518 satellites. In response, the FCC set a limit on the total number of Starlink Gen 2 satellites to be smaller than what was permitted by the FCC's Starlink V-band permission from November 2018. Moreover, it prevented the launch of Gen 2 satellites into higher or lower orbits by limiting those satellites to middle ground orbits, and it didn't even set up its compromise in a way that would allow SpaceX to complete at least three Starlink Gen 2 shells. What's worse, SpaceX's extensive plans to use next-generation ground stations and E-band antennas on Starlink Gen 2 satellites hardly received a mention in the FCC's conditional permission. Instead, it only stated that additional assessment and coordination with federal users would be conducted before deferring acting on the request. It makes us wonder what the Commission has been doing in the 30 months since SpaceX's initial Gen 2 application and the 15 months since its Gen 2 amendment that the FCC claims it needs more time for it to analyze the difficult and unique issues on the record before the Commission. In contrast, SpaceX obtained a complete license for its 7,518 satellite V-band constellation in less than 5 months. 16 months after its initial application and 8 months after a revised application, SpaceX 4,408 satellite Starlink Gen 1 constellation received a license. It was the first mega constellation that the current FCC had ever examined. The FCC's unusual and contradictory decision-making is made further stranger by the fact that Amazon's Project Kuiper, which has the potential to be a significant competitor to Starlink in the future, was the inspiration for allowing SpaceX to launch a portion of its Starlink Gen 2 constellation. The FCC indicated that it agreed with Amazon's stance and that the public interest would be served by pursuing this approach since it would provide them the opportunity to monitor the development of this enormous deployment and more time to evaluate issues that are specific to the other orbits SpaceX wants. 
The FCC already approved the V-band Starlink constellation. It was made up of 7,518 satellites in very low Earth orbits. The FCC gave SpaceX permission to use 2,814 satellites in orbits between 1,100 and 1,300 kilometers for the first Starlink constellation, which has 4,425 satellites. SpaceX asked for permission in 2020 to launch those 2,814 satellites to about 550 kilometers, where failed satellites would fall back to Earth in just five years. This was because SpaceX was becoming more aware of the effects of space debris, which would last for hundreds of years at 1,000 plus kilometers. The FCC fully approved the change in April 2021, two years after it was made. No one knows why. SpaceX requested alternative orbits for 468 satellites in orbit between 604 and 614 kilometers and 19,400 satellites in orbit between 340 and 360 kilometers. According to the FCC, these other orbits present particular issues that require Starlink Gen 2 to be additionally considered. The FCC has already given SpaceX permission to launch more than 7,500 satellites into orbits lower than 360 kilometers and nearly 3,000 smaller satellites into orbits much higher than 604 kilometers. Starlink satellites are anticipated to be about four times heavier and have a magnitude more surface area. It is therefore difficult to ignore the Commission's assertions that concerns regarding orbital debris and space safety and problems peculiar to other orbits supported a partial life since refusal. These assertions are, at best, unclear. The FCC's decision to make SpaceX use a metric made up by another third-party for-profit company, Leo Labs, is perhaps the strangest part of the partial grant. Leo Labs reportedly suggested in a letter from March 2022 that SpaceX's permission to keep launching satellites should be directly tied to an arbitrary metric that measures the number of years each failed satellite stays in orbit, added up for all failed satellites. Well, the FCC seemed to like the idea because it made it a clear condition of its already strict Starlink Gen 2 approval, even adopting Leo Lab's arbitrary limit of 100 object years. In other words, once all of the failed Starlink Gen 2 satellites have been in orbit for 100 years, the FCC will order SpaceX to cease satellite deployment until it reviews sources of satellite failure and determines whether there are any adequate mitigation measures going forward. The FCC agrees that the arbitrary 100-year limit means that Starlink would have to stop launching satellites if just 20 of its satellites in operational orbits failed. However, the Commission doesn't say how it will decide when SpaceX can start sending Starlink rockets back into space again after a launch stop. SpaceX must also follow the FCC's deployment schedule. If the corporation doesn't launch 3,750 Starlink Gen 2 satellites by November 2028, it stands the risk of losing its license. Astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell's unofficial observations show that SpaceX has more than 30 failed Starlink Gen 1 satellites at or near their operational altitudes of more than 500 kilometers. This means that SpaceX would almost certainly have to stop launching Gen 1 satellites if this new rule were applied to other constellations. However, the FCC makes it clear that, in theory, it will consider removing these limitations and allowing SpaceX to launch more of its envisioned Starlink Gen 2 constellation in the future. But the Commission has shown SpaceX many times that it will take years to change licenses or approve new ones. This is not reassuring for investments as big and as risky as mega constellations. In the end, the FCC's partial grant puts SpaceX Starlink Gen 2 constellation in a bad spot that can only be fixed with shady backroom deals. For the company to keep going with its current license, it might have to change its satellites and ground stations so they don't use the E-band or it might have to take a chance and keep building and deploying satellites and ground stations with E-band antennas even though there's no guarantee it will ever be able to use them. Moreover, there is no assurance that the FCC will let SpaceX launch any of the 22,500 satellites that the partial authorization left on the table. The financial calculations are used to determine whether the constellation is economically viable and how large this must significantly alter the infrastructure. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Isn't the FCC limiting SpaceX potential? What kind of a mess do you think SpaceX is into? Comment down below. Also, please leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos. Goodbye!